Good afternoon, everyone, and I'm very happy to welcome you to a new edition of uh, Outlook, the foreign uh, political program of Ludovica TV, in the new school year of 2021, when we are very happy to see a lot of students on cam campus. And I really hope uh, that uh, it stays like that and we are going to have a very vibrant uh, school year with Hungarian and uh, foreign students and professors here. This time I would like to welcome to the studio Professor Robert Spesser, who is a visiting professor with us through the Fulbright program. Professor, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Professor Spesser, uh, you are a retired military officer and now you are teaching high-ranking military officers uh, in the United States. Uh, why did you decide to come to Hungary with the Fulbright program? Oh, thank you for asking. I was excited at the opportunity when I was looking at the Fulbright grants that this institution, the National University of Public Service, was looking for someone interested in national security studies. And that's what I've been teaching for the last five years to U.S. Army officers and now also to uh, joint officers, Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. So it was a specific program here at Ludovica and at Zarini Barracks that really excited me and therefore I applied for a Fulbright grant to teach. Um, Ludovica University of Public Service is a specialized higher educational uh, institution. We teach civilian students at uh, the Faculty of uh, Public Governance and Inter International Studies and also at the Water Sciences Faculty. But we also teach students uh, at the Military uh, Sciences and Military Officers Training Program as well as the Law Enforcement uh, 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 Faculty. Why do you think uh, it is good or not to teach in the same institution civilian and uh, milita military uh, personnel. I suppose that your uh, past experience uh, must be that you also worked with civilian people as well. I have worked with civilians. I did 30 years on active duty in the military. And as you advance up in rank, you're working with c civilians because it's civilian control of the military. They're the ones that create a lot of the policies that we then implement. And the uh, U.S. Army and our other services, we send a lot of our officers out to get master's degrees or PhDs at civilian institutions then to come back and teach. I think it's important that the civilians understand a little bit of the military culture and that the military also understand the civilian culture because both can learn from each other if they interact as opposed to seeing them as two distinct different groups. We are very happy to, to note that you teach uh, at both faculties, the, the military uh, science and military officers training program and uh, the public governance and, and uh, international relations faculty. What are your ex uh, first impressions on, on teaching in Hungary compared to school life in, in the United States? Well, I, I'm teaching a lot younger students here at, at, at this campus. Most of my students have been in the military for at least 10 or 12 years, so they're married, they have kids, a different life, um, and they look forward to studying as a, to get away from to typical work and spend mm -hmm. some time with their family. So it's, it's a, a different group. I'm excited to, to teach some of the bachelor students and master degree students here. They're very engaging. And um, I use my classes, not always just lecture, but try to get them to engage and converse. And, and I know it's difficult because they're taking this, these classes in English and reading English articles but I'm surprised at how active and engaged they are. It's very refreshing. Um, you've been here now uh, roughly less than a month. 
I, I suppose. What are your impressions about uh, uh, Hungarian life, Budapest? Uh, Hungarians are extremely uh, interested in what other people think about them. Well, I'm impressed with all the the music here mm. and the, the, the music culture, the number of concerts and venues, uh, the interest in mathematics. Mm. So I was speaking with a colleague and I know the Hungarians are very in, good in uh, theoretical and applied mathematics and the utilization of mat mathematics and course of action analysis and statistical deviation was just amazing and surprising how, how, how scientifically they go into the analysis there. Budapest is a easy city to, to get around I'm using the trams, oh. the metros, and the buses. I'm looking forward to the M3 metro line being finished though. That would be nice soon. But, uh, and, it, and it's safe. My wife and I are out walking around. Uh, it, it's a very hospitable and easy to get around and safe city. So um, I'm surprised there's not more tourists here. I'm glad there's not. I don't want to compete with everybody. Uh, I assume I they'll be coming back life soon. Comes, comes back really and uh, tourists are also coming back. And I also appreciate the sense of humor with, with mm, Hungarians um, in, in, in their perspective. So mm -hmm. um, sit down on, on the metro and engaging with a few people conversing and, and the humor aspect mm. is pretty nice. I suppose in the classrooms uh, Afghanistan comes up as a topic from time to time. We all uh, watched the news, what was going on with the withdrawal, with the ev evacuation. With your vast experience, what is your reading of what happened uh, lately uh, in Afghanistan? Okay, uh, and I'm speaking for myself, so even though I'm a retired military officer and a professor mm. with the National Defense University, this is my own opinion and doesn't represent mm. the U.S. government or the Fulbright Commission. It, it was time to get out, mm. and various different political leaders had, had expressed that at certain times, and the American electorate elected certain presidents um, back in 2016 and again in, in 2020 with the idea that they would get out. But the devil is in the details, as, as the cliche goes. It's how you do it mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. inform allies and to withdraw. The question arises is how much time in Afghanistan was in the national interest? Could it have been done a different way? And this goes back to what I teach in, uh, at, back in the United States and what I'm going to bring up in the classes is there's nations have national interests mm. and there's certain policies that they want to put out as an end state. And then the question arises, how do you achieve, achieve that? What's the best way? And what's the most economical way to do it? Because it's always, with politics, you're balancing your aspirations, what you want to do with the capabilities and means. So you need to balance those. And then every action you take, there's a reaction by somebody else. And perhaps um, we were too lazy in trying to figure out what needed to be done, or nobody wanted to make the decision earlier. Um, and nobody wanted the, the political blame, perhaps. Because even though nations have national interest and have foreign policies, a lot of times those reflect what's going on domestically. And, and people will see, mm -hmm. will see that. So it will be interesting to see how the, the research and analysis and what comes out. Uh, were there different ideas that were proposed? Um, was this a surprise? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or was this a, uh, the, there was no easy way to do it. So take the pain and the cost now mm -hmm. because it, how long do we expend treasure and blood if it's not all that in questionable in mm -hmm. our national interest to do so. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's going to stay as a, as, as a topic uh, in the classrooms as well. It, it will stay as a topic yeah. in the classroom and I'm sure it will offer an opportunity for many students to write masters and PhD theses.
All right, let's encourage them. My last question is, uh, with your distinguished career uh, at your uh, professional, uh, with your professional experience, um, you decided to apply uh, for a Fulbright position uh, with us. Uh, our students, uh, many of them, come from the countryside and uh, it's already a big thing for them to arrive to Budapest, settle down here. So how would you encourage these young people to take up another trouble and go abroad and study uh, with Erasmus, with Fulbright, with other possibilities? I would encourage them to do so just as their eyes were opened by coming to Budapest and living here, so too will their eyes be opened and their worldview expanded, whether they take an Erasmus program abroad next semester or they apply to Fulbright. And the Fulbright Commission here in Hungary has a office dedicated to providing information to how students can study abroad in America. In fact, I'd like to thank the Ministry of uh, Technology and Innovation for quadrupling their contribution to, to the Fulbright Hungary Commission, which means more Hungarian students and scholars can now then travel to the United States. It's competitive and uh, they peer review based on merit, but the opportunity exists and I would encourage them to look at the Fulbright Hungary website on, on the various different opportunities and even to go over there just to research on what uh, schools are like in studying in the United States and what are the opportunities. Professor Robert Spessert, thank you very much for being with us and welcome again to the uh, Ludovica community. Thank you very much for this interview. Thank you and I, I look forward to engaging with peers and with students here on campus. Thank you very much.